Hey, how's it going? Dave2D here. This is the 2018 HP Omen. So when they first came out with like the original Omen gaming laptop in like 2015, I liked it, did a good review on it. And then they did two years, like the 2016 version and the 2017 version were just, eh. I just didn't recommend them. I did reviews on them. I just told people honestly not to buy them. 2018 model kicks ass. Straight up, this is such a big improvement over the previous generation that well, I'm pretty excited to do this video. Okay, so the design of this thing is very Omen-y still. It's got the red face and the classic red accents for HP Omen, but the design is a little bit different from before. So the whole chassis is a little bit smaller. It's a little bit more compact and they've redesigned this whole product. The bottom half of this laptop has an aluminum keyboard deck and a plastic bottom panel, both well-made, both quite sturdy, but the top half of the laptop isn't as sturdy. It's still well-built. It's just, there's a little bit more flex to the materials and stuff. There's just no aluminum on the top part of it. So the screen has a little bit of flex and I also don't love the hinge. So some companies do this hinge really poorly. They did an HP actually has like, there's no clicking or there's no like weird tension or anything like that. Uh, but we've seen some companies in the past put hinges close together like this and they develop some weird play that just causes the hinge to fail over time. I don't think that's going to happen on this one. Uh, it just feels actually like a good hinge. Okay. This whole device isn't an ultra premium, super thin laptop, right? It's built pretty well considering the price, but there are a lot of plastic components and it starts at $800 if you get the base model. That's with the i5 and a GTX 1050, but even fully spec'd out, I think it hits like 11, maybe $1,200 on Amazon. That's with the GTX 1060. And I feel like that's really reasonable for what you're getting. Now, I think the biggest change this year in terms of the aesthetics is actually the screen. It used to have really thick bezels and it's no longer a member of the thick bezels club. It's got a nice and thin top and side bezel. The screen uses a 144 Hertz panel, excellent for games and pretty usable for color accurate work. Now this model is running the GTX 1060. It's not like the fastest GPU out there, but a very respectable card even right now in 2018, despite this GPU being a couple years old, it still delivers really good performance for most AAA titles. Another big change this year is the thermal performance. So the 2016 model and the 2017 model had not great thermals to the point where I just didn't recommend those devices. 2018 model has significantly improved. I'm not seeing thermal throttling under benchmarks. Now the temperatures still run hotter than I'd like, but at least we're not seeing thermal throttling. That being said, I don't love the fans. So for one, on idle, this thing doesn't run silent. And that's something that is important to me. Not everyone cares about that stuff, but when this thing's not doing anything, if I'm just like browsing the web, I don't like that I can still hear the fans. They're quiet, but it's still audible. And that's with the kind of default profile. If you go for the more aggressive profile, it's even worse. The other thing is, even when this thing's running full tilt in games, the fans don't get super loud, but I wish there was more thermal headroom. Honestly, if they'd given more granular control with the fans, like being able to just ramp it up manually, I think that would have solved it alone. But yeah, the fans, maybe they can fix this with software. So I will say that, but in its current state, I wish the fans were a little bit better. The keyboard's pretty good. It's comfortable lighting in zones, not individually lit, but it's a good layout. And I think most people can get used to it quickly. The trackpad, however, is something that I don't like. It doesn't use Windows Precision drivers. I really wish they did because so many manufacturers are using Windows Precision drivers nowadays. It just feels like a bit of a miss. It's not the tracking, it's more the gestures. Like sometimes it won't pick up whatever you're doing with your gestures and that's a driver thing. Uh, port selection. There's a handful of them located on the back, including a Thunderbolt 3 port, and you get some USB on the sides as well as an SD card slot. The speakers, they're located on the side, like the bottom side, so they're not in the best position, but they sound pretty good. Not bass heavy or anything like that, but considering that this is kind of like mid-tier gaming laptop, I'm happy with the speakers. The internals, these are really easy to get into. It's a handful of Phillips screws and you have access to both of your drives, RAM, Wi-Fi card, and you also have your battery. So this battery is a reasonably large one. It's 70 watt hours, but I'm not getting amazing battery life. We're looking at four, maybe four and a half hours. It's still respectable, but because this is a relatively compact 15 inch laptop, I think a lot of people are looking at it as like a daily driver they bring to school or for work. And for most people that are doing that, you're gonna have to bring the charger to last the full day. Uh, overall thoughts on this device though, I really like it. It's so much more improved compared to the 2016 and 2017 models. Like those ones I did not recommend. This one I highly recommend. So yeah. One last thing, the mouse that I used when I was playing games on this thing was actually the HP Omen Reactor mouse. So here's the deal. This thing was sent as a demo for me to kind of check this whole thing out with. And Usually when computer companies or computer manufacturers make mice, they're not great. But I saw this thread on Reddit where a bunch of people were praising this thing. I was like, really, is it, is it actually legit? 
and it's a really good mouse. It looks weird. If I'm being honest, this is totally not my design aesthetic, but people love the performance. The cable's wrapped in this metal braid, which prevents fraying. It's got optomechanical switches and optical sensor and this height adjustable area for the back where your palm goes. It's a strange looking mouse, but the performance is good. And I understand why the people that have picked this up love it because it's this unconventional mouse, like HP mice. Who would have ever thought that it'd be a good mouse, but it's a good mouse. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.